Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. Just here I've got two yacorn plants. In today's video we're going to dig one of them up, harvest the tubers, split the crown and replant and finally we're going to do some taste testing. Yacorn originates in the central and north Andes area and is also called Peruvian ground apple. I believe uh, it's in the daisy flower. You can see this one is just starting to flower, which is why I'm not going to dig this plant up. I am going to dig this one. Now it's also called sunroot. The tubers are similar to Jerusalem artichoke in that they contain a lot of inulin and can be quite sweet if you leave them to cure for a week or so after harvest. Now my plants have started to get affected with the frost. We get fairly light frosts here, but that's enough to kill off the top of the plant, but it should leave the crown and the, the roots okay. But for today, we're going to dig this plant up here. Now this one, I was going to dig up because it's already coming out of the ground. You can see one of the tubers there. But because it's starting to flower, I will be leaving that. And I'll probably just make sure I cover over that crown a lot better than it is at the moment. I've been growing these two plants here for a couple of years now, and this will be my first harvest. I was gifted a couple of crowns by a neighbour, and I haven't grown it before. So I put those two crowns in and found that the first year it really didn't do much, so I just left it untouched. And these plants have done a lot better in their second year. And the flower on this second plant over here is the first time it's going to be flowering, which is quite exciting. So that's why I'm going to leave that one undisturbed. First up, I'm going to just trim all of this growth. Now, I have heard that you can use the leaves uh, for food. Um, I'd imagine you'd just sort of stir fry them up like you would a spinach, but I'm not sure. I haven't actually tried those before, but today these ones are going to get fed to my young chickens. Here we go, little chickies. Let's see if you like Yacon leaves. These little ones have devoured the former pumpkin patch here. So I've been throwing in lots of greens for them to enjoy. They're still not big enough to go in with the, the big girls. Well, that makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Now, I'm not sure how far out the tubers come. They look like they're a bit like a um, sweet potato or something, and they just sort of come out from the plant. So we'll just jump on in and see how we go. Ooh. All right. Couple little ones there. Oh, here we go. I just want to establish where they are before really going to town with my fork to lift this plant so I'm not destroying any. And I might have broken some off. Oh, here we go. All right. And here we go. Here's some yakon. And the plant actually divides itself quite easily. See, that's, I think that's our harvest. I'm not going to take too much. I'm going to leave that one on. It is an energy store for the plant. So I can just replant that one. And you can see this plant has got, see I've done that with my fork. I've done that damage with my fork there. I think you could probably, or maybe it's split naturally. It does have splits on each side. And I could probably take this big one as well. Get that out of there. And then I'll see if I can split this into a plant through there, but we'll wait and do that at the end. And that's another little plant. Let's have a look. And I'll take that one. 
And I'll just leave all of that on, actually. There's another little plant there. It's a bit like Jerusalem artichoke. It sort of splits very easily. And you can see that's all the little growing points on there. So we've got, these are uh, new growing points. If we had uh, sort of warmth all year round, that would be growing all the time, but the, the frost's gonna knock these plants down. And you can see this is the, the plant's energy storage mechanism. And uh, again, that's where a little shoot would have come off, given a bit more time. And now this one might be where I got it with the fork. You can see it's quite starchy apparently uh, when you just harvest it. And then if you leave it, particularly if you leave it in the sun, over about a week, those starches turn to sugars and it becomes really quite sweet. That's a couple of plants just there, which I might try and release. Actually, this is the plant that I'm going to just replant in the hole. Uh, split this one. See, that one's separating pretty easily. That's our tubers we've managed to harvest. And this is the one I'm going to replant. So that's one plant. And over here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six plants that I'm going to actually take out to the swale to diversify plantings out in that area. But before I get to the swale, I'm just going to get this one back into the ground. To protect the crown, I'm just going to use some of this grass that I've just cut with my sickle and cover it over really thickly to help insulate it during winter. What I'll do with these is just actually put them with my pumpkins and cure them for about a week and then do my taste testing. Although I might try one of these now to see how we go. My pumpkins have been curing in here for at least a couple of weeks. So they'll be ready soon to put in the house into a dry, cool place out of sunlight. You can see that the stalks have all dried off now, so I think they should be fine for storage, although there's still a little bit of green in some of them. So I might leave them a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna pop our uh, yakon in this area as well for the week before we come back to see what they taste like. There we have it. And I'll be saving this one, giving it a wash and giving it a peel. The skin uh, apparently doesn't taste that great. So I'll peel it and then taste it today. And then I think next week we'll taste one of these and I might just sneak another little tuber out from the plant that's remaining so we can sort of do a comparison between freshly harvested and a week old. Now we'll gather these up and take them out to our swale. Now one of the reasons I want to spread this plant around is because it is easy to propagate. But another reason is that it might in future provide food for some of my livestock. Right here, I've got Jerusalem artichoke that's growing next to my chicken coop. And I find that the ducks come up from the dam and help themselves to the tubers that they've discovered in the ground. So I'm hoping that they might do the same with the yakon tubers. Like the yakon plant, Jerusalem artichokes produce these tubers at the base. You can see here, someone's had a go at that. Now it might be a, a mouse or, or a rat, but last year, my ducks really enjoy getting into all these tubers. You can see, you can see some more kind of just right down in there. If you were to dig this plant up, there'd be just kilos of these tubers. I've planted, I've planted these Jerusalem artichokes here because they do grow so well and tall. And in summer, they do provide shade for this little house. 
So they're multifunctional and I find that that's a great permaculture plant to have growing around the property. You can see here we've got someone enjoying it there and they kind of just dig around and find the tubers themselves. Just here is my roadside swale. I've got my plum trees just there. I do have a few uh, black or red currants growing that are just really starting to kick in. But I might squeeze in a few yakon plants just kind of in around here that uh, the ducks will be able to readily access. So I've got about six plants. I think if I put three, one, one, two, three here, and then we'll wander down the swale and put in our other three down there. Now, as these plants are frost sensitive, I'm going to put them in where they've got a little bit of shelter from the frost so that the crown is protected. All right. That looks big enough. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a bit of mulch and make sure that's all covered well. Okay, and I think that will be good. Now, I'll squeeze the second one in up here. Now, in this spot here, there are some palm tree roots. Uh, I don't anticipate digging this plant up ever because there'll be so much elsewhere. So I'm not going to be disturbing those each year. If the ducks do find them, well, that's fine. I'm sure they won't dig it up too much. But it's all about just increasing the diversity of the plantings in the areas and uh, building your ecosystems. One day these plants will start to flower and that will help with the pollinators in the area in addition to just looking lovely. Okay, two. So the second one is just in over there. I was going to put one in this area, but this tree has died. It's just a Tagasasti support tree, so I'll be taking that down. So I won't put anything close to that at the moment, but I might just sneak in a third little plant just there. It'll be out of the, the way of anything else. I've got a, um, a current plant here, but there's nothing much other than some calendula just in that area. So I think that'll work just fine. Okay, a bit of this is mulch. The grasses in this swale are slowly uh, disappearing as the soil improves, but it's still handy to have some nearby for some quick, whoops, quick mulching. Didn't intend to get that calendula plant, but there's plenty growing up around my plum trees and they spread their seeds around fairly readily. Now, I think this might be a good second spot for the rest of our yacon plants. They do require some sunshine. Um, they can grow in full sun or part shade, except in cooler climates where they could benefit from a lot more warmth. But I think just here, we've got north out here and east, so they'll certainly get full morning sun here, which I think will be fine. I'm going to give it a go and uh, See if we can just fill this little spot in a bit more. The more you can increase your plantings, the more all of these sorts of weeds will become under control. Here I've got a little current plant, so I'll be sure to plant away from that. And the only other little plant here is some uh, rhubarb. So I'll kind of put it up 
around here and maybe on this side here. And we see if we can uh, start to get this spot under control. That's the six plants in the ground. I will be coming around and marking each of those plants so that we don't lose it and chop it down sort of as these grasses get huge in spring. Uh, but that's all I'll do. I'll leave them to grow happily, hopefully, and hopefully the ducks will discover them at some point and enjoy all those tubers. With the planting all done, I can do my taste test for today now. I'm just gonna peel that. And apparently the texture is quite crunchy, so we'll see how that is. Looks a bit like a potato, but it's mostly eaten and enjoyed raw. Hmm, it's actually quite nice. I think that'd be nice sliced up in a salad. I don't mind its flavor straight out of the ground, but I'll be interested to see in a week's time how it tastes and how much sweeter it is. Well, it's a week later and I've been out to harvest another tuber fresh from my remaining yacon plant, which has got a beautiful daisy flower on it. So that's nice to see that that's come before any frosts have killed it off. And I've also been to grab one of the yacon tubers that we harvested last week that have been sitting there for the week. Uh, it's interesting to feel the difference um, in the tubers. They have lost a lot of moisture and um, don't feel as crispy as the fresh out of the ground. So I'll be moving all of those tubers into the fridge ASAP. So to remind myself what they're like fresh out of the ground, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this tuber. Mm. I didn't mind that flavor and see if this one is in fact more sugary or sweeter rather. Mm. Mm. That is noticeably sweeter. So that is actually lovely and it's still retained quite a bit of the texture, although they do feel a bit more spongy than when they were first out of the ground but it is still quite juicy and that is actually really lovely. I'll be happy to have that sliced up in my salad today, but I think you could also just slice that up and add it at the end of a stir fry and it'd be kind of like a, a water chestnut substitute, I think. Now as to the question of nutrition, I don't think it adds too much nutritionally to our diet, but it does have the inulin, which is actually a prebiotic and feeds our gut microbiome. So it's really good for our gut health. Although I wouldn't want to overdo it because that same inulin can cause a bit of bloating as well. I hope you found this video interesting. Digging out my yacon for the first time was certainly fun for me. And spreading that around my food forest will just help with diversity down the track. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.